Henry took photograph after photograph, but seemed to have no urge whatever to follow it up with a visit to the dark room. Bravo, Edith! I began to fear that he had suddenly taken the pledge. I think I'll just go and develop these before tea. Care to come? I would indeed, but I have a slight headache. Sun, I think, and I'm afraid the chemicals wouldn't improve it. Mr. Mazzini and I will have tea under the tulip tree. I've always found that most beneficial for a headache. I'm afraid Henry will think me a poor enthusiast. I sometimes think that he is too great a one. In a way, I am to blame for it. Before we were married, he had few interests. He used to spend the greater part of each day at his club. I felt that such a life was unhealthy and persuaded him to come and live here in the country. I hoped that perhaps he would interest himself in the welfare of our tenantry, as I do. But he became interested in photography on our honeymoon. And since then, it has become the major preoccupation of his life. Mr. Mazzini. Yes? I hope you will forgive my speaking to you on a personal matter. But it worries me that Henry should spend so much time on his hobby that he has little left for any more useful activity. Am I right to let him go on like this? I could hardly point out that Henry now had no time left for any kind of activity. So I continue to discuss his future. He has never shown any wish for a career in politics? None. Nor any other ambitions? One only. To win a prize at the Salon of Photography in Brussels. What is it? Oh, they're just burning some leaves at the bottom of the garden. But they can't be at this time of year. Henry! No, you stay here. Needless to say, I was too late.